We're going to talk next to a guest about my dad caring things in unusual things ways, and it brought Greeks to mind this clip. Should educate non Greeks about being Greek, and that any ailment from psoriasis to poison ivy could be cured with Windex. <laughs> oh. I yeah, love you that. remember that from my big fat Greek Somebody wedding? That was 15 years ago that Sweet. film Sweet. came out. It had us all wondering about Windex. Yeah. Any, any yeah. scratch on your skin, put some Windex on it. Hey, there's a new book that breaks down some other horrifying treatments that used to be accepted as good medicine. Things like leeches, cocaine, cough drops, tobacco, toothpaste. The new book is called Quackery, A Brief History of the Worst Ways to Cure Everything. Nate Peterson is the author of the book who actually lives in beautiful Bend, Oregon, and made the trip to this side of the mountains. Had a book signing, I believe, last night. We had a book signing last week at Powell's. Or last week, okay. Yep. Well, thanks for being here. I love the topic of this. How did you come thanks. up with, I want to do research on quackery, as you call it? Yeah, so the book is co-authored with a physician, and her name is Dr. Lydia King. She practices medicine in Omaha, Nebraska. And we both shared a similar interest in the macabre, kind of the morbid sides, the little, little bit of amusing side channels in medical history, and thought it'd be fun to combine forces and, and put together a book on that. It's a lot of fun to research. Now, there are things far worse than Windex in your book. Of course, I mean, much worse, crazy yes. crazy <laughs> stuff like cocaine, cough drops. Yep, what so. did you find out about those? Right, so cocaine was used, uh, well, was notoriously used, of course, as a stimulant going back several millennia in the, in the new world here. But when it, brought, when it was brought back to Europe, folks started to experiment with all sorts of ways you could maybe use cocaine in a medicinal fashion, right? And my favorite example of cocaine is a, a guy in France named Angela Mariani decided he'd throw some leaves of the cocoa plant in a bottle of Bordeaux wine, you know, and see what happens next. And the alcohol extracted the cocaine and then dissolves it in the wine, so it makes for a really heady drink. Drink, a drink that's about <laughs> you know, 10% alcohol, 8% cocaine. Big hit. Well, I'm yes. curious if you uncovered any myths about marijuana, which is kind of a hot topic of some people experimenting with these days. We actually didn't delve into marijuana in, in the book, though we did cover a few other sort of new world plants that get enthusiastically embraced by European physicians. So in addition to cocaine, a good example is uh, tobacco. You know, which shows up in a lot of really curious ways. And toothpaste, and, you found? Yeah, toothpaste. Toothpaste uh, still in use today. You can still buy creamy stuff. It's tobacco to toothpaste. Do what? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> what is it supposed to do exactly? But it's on the market in South Asia. So if you're in India, look for creamy snuff. My favorite name ever for a toothpaste brand. I think. You oh. cover a topic about fasting, fasting for health. This is something people still do. Okay, I won't eat for 48 hours, cleanse right. my body. What did you find out about fasting? Yeah, so uh, fasting, of course, shows up every now and then as, as a recommendation, both for health or for, for dietary reasons, right? And there are some really extreme cases of fasting that we cover in the book where people, you know, took that to the extreme. You look at something like the breatharian movement where, where there's this, this notion that maybe you can just exist on, on you know, the energy of the universe by just sort of breathing and taking in sun, sunlight and so on, and, and you, you can't, <laughs> you know, and, and you die. You need Eventually. a burrito, as it turns out. Yeah, every yeah. now and then, you know, and, and it turns out some of the people espousing that philosophy, you know, were secretly hitting up their local McDonald's or whatever. I was going to say, and, were they thin so. or just crazy? <laughs> right, or both, right? So. I'm also curious, did you find some things though in your research you're like, son of a gun, that does work. Yeah, I mean that's the interesting thing is that you know some of the stuff wasn't someone intentionally trying to sell fraudulent medicine so much as it was someone trying to push the boundaries of what was accepted at the time. So something like leeches, which were all the rage for a really long time because of this notion of bloodletting, like you needed to remove your bad blood to heal yourself. So people use leeches to do that. It turns out though that the saliva of the leech has some really useful properties in it. It's an anticoagulant and we still still create that product synthetically today and use it in medicine. Wow. Yeah, still available. All right, yeah. well, Nate, it's so much uh, to learn from your book called Quackery, and I think you wrote it, um, you know, with a serious tone, but you probably also had some fun along the way. A lot of fun. Yep, we had a lot of fun doing it, and hopefully that translates into the finished product. Well, I'm just so. thankful it's not a book about weather forecasting. So I say. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming by. <laughs> Thanks so Safe much for having me on today. Safe travels back to Bend. We appreciate it. it. When we continue...